Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to what day are we on on lockdown now? Day number 10, 11? Day nine. Day nine. No, it's 10. It's not 10. Oh. <laughs> welcome to day 10. Day nine of lockdown. I hope you're all surviving. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, and uh, thank you to those who are returning. Uh, given the talk that we were supposed to have on Friday. Um, so thank you very much and welcome to the new ones that were not here on Friday. Um, welcome also to our uh, guest this morning, our speaker, uh, uh, Ms. Lerato Matabuche, and I'll introduce her in a little bit, um, who's going to be um, taking us through this interesting topic that I'm sure all of you are quite keen to, to hear about. Um, I'm going to go through just a few uh, house rules uh, before we start. I'll give you a big brief background around womanomics and why we're here this morning. Um, and then uh, hopefully we'll get to hear some of your voices uh, as soon as we've gone through some of the content that Rato will share with us. So as you have joined, uh, you will notice that your mic has been muted. Um, it will be muted. Uh, for the duration, I think, of uh, the first part of Lerato's presentation, just so that we don't have many voices in, in, in the room. But uh, unlike many other engagements that we've had, uh, this one is going to be a, an engaging one, i.e. we want to hear more of your voices <laughs> uh, than a one-way speak. So at some point, we will unmute your, 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 your mics and you will have an opportunity to speak. In the meantime, I'm going to ask you to navigate towards your the, the chat component of your of your app or your or, or the connection that you you've used your web app. So if you see there's chats there. If you've got any comments, any questions as we're going along, please do tap them up there. And as Lato speaking, you might be able to attend to those as she's speaking. Otherwise, we're going to have a very open um, uh, question and answer session. The purpose of today's engagement, yes, it's about sharing information from Lato, but it's also about Getting, it in, uh, getting your insights and getting your thoughts uh, to provide input into how the DTI responds uh, to the challenges that, that this pandemic has brought to us. So welcome to the second of our um, online circle series. And if you didn't join us for last week's session, which we, which we had um, around uh, 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 with our screen at the time, around your own personal development, the reason we're having these, we're having these twice a week uh, for the next 90 days. And it's really around responding to um, the, the, I suppose the, the, the environment that we find ourselves in, uh, where we are now expected to be physically distant, not socially with these apps now. It's not about social distancing, it's about physical distancing. And yet for many of us as entrepreneurs, um, it's a very lonely space. And so this is about creating a platform where yes, we share information, but also we get to engage and share thoughts hopefully find ways to collaborate but so that you're not sitting lonely in your own space um, um, trying to figure things out. This particular topic that we have this morning is very close to the work that we do as Womanomics which is really around focusing connecting women to opportunities on the continent and to each other to be able to participate in trade opportunities and for us most importantly it's around saying um, oh I must start my video sorry <laughs> I forgot <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this particular topic for us is, is close to the work that we do at Womanomics, as I said, which is really around connecting women to opportunities on the continent, but most importantly, to connect them to each other to be able to, to trade across the continent. So we are so blessed to have uh, Lerato with us this morning. Uh, she is the DDG of the trade of trade. Um, uh, trade and invest in, in South Africa in the Department of Trade and Industry and Competition. And competition. Right? <laughs> it is now DTIC as of the 31st of March. Yes, 1st of April. 1st of April. That is right. Yes. <laughs> um, so she's very interesting for the topic that we have today because she founded and headed the Trade, in, Trade Invest Africa. And we've been quite uh, fortunate in that in the work that we've done at Womanomics, we've worked quite closely with her team and have worked in, in facilitating workshops to help unpack what some of those opportunities are. I think for many South Africans and for even other people around the continent, this idea of doing business beyond your own borders, uh, 
navigating that is quite difficult. So we're quite uh, fortunate that you are here today. She has asked that this is, is an interactive session, as I said in the beginning, so you're not going to be quiet and typing something else in your corner. <laughs> it really is about bringing up your voice because yes, it's about sharing information, as I said, but it's also about you uh, sharing with what your experiences have been in doing trade on the continent, what some of your challenges have been, and most importantly, what you'd like to see from government, which Ngato is, is, is representing here today. So without much further ado, I'd like to yeah. hand over to Lerato, who's going to share with us some thoughts, and then we're going to open it up and have some engagement. So please have your thoughts, your questions on hand, uh, so that uh, when Rihema, uh, my partner on the other end, opens up uh, for some comments, uh, that we have those, and we use this as an, as an opportunity to engage rather than to just listen. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, Lebo. Um, may I proceed? Lebo? <laughs> Am I on? Hello, I can see you. Can you hear me? Is everything yes, okay? On. Can I proceed? Okay, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, I haven't checked who else has joined us, but thank you so much um, on a Monday morning for coming to listen to this input from a South African government functionary. Um, but we are of the view that it's quite important that we have these conversations and we have this specific conversation because as the Department of Trade and Industry and Competition, we are looking at how best to support our entrepreneurs and to maintain the trade flows that we have with the rest of the world. So, so that, that is a very, very serious um, sort of crisis response aspect that we're looking at and that we're looking into. Uh, I'm sure most of you would have noted from the economic cluster that we have quite a number of support measures for entrepreneurs. Um, some of some of the, the the schemes that have come out, the debt relief scheme that has come out, business growth resilience, resilience facility that has come out, tax measures um, that Treasury is working on as NSARS um, to support businesses in this period. Now, my responsibility um, within the department with the team is now how then do we continue to maintain trade flows, specifically with the continent because we are mindful of the interdependency um, between the South African economy and the rest of the continent and of course the rest of the world. Um, so I thought I will start by just giving everyone a sense of what the division I'm responsible for does when life is normal, when there's no corona to worry about, and then um, in this current situation and post um, the corona crisis, how we can then have a conversation about how best we can continue to support you. Um, the division I head is called Trade and Investment South Africa. Our mandate is to facilitate the export of South African goods and services to the continent, to the rest of the world, um, whether we do that through export promotion facilities or through outward investments, uh, whichever instruments are relevant, we utilize. We've got four strategic areas of responsibility. Um, the first one being export development and support. With that, we, the mandate is to make sure that we create an exporting culture in this country. Um, not every entrepreneur is an exporter. Not every entrepreneur is thinking about exporting. So it's about how do we inculcate an export culture in the South African economy, knowing that exports themselves constitute about 32% of GDP. So it's quite a sizable contribution. So we want to see that grow, um, particularly around services and, and of course goods. So, so what we do with the Export Development and Support Program is we go all over the the, the um, the country, all nine provinces every year, I think plus minus 800 enterprises that we train every year, where we provide training programs at the cost of the state um, to, to make sure that our entrepreneurs throughout the country know uh, what, it, what, what, what goes into exporting. Um, so we train our entrepreneurs into, for example, how do you negotiate your freight forwarding contract? Uh, what kind of labeling requirements are required? How do you access the new market? How do you position your product? That, that sort of thing. So we provide this support. Um, th there's a dedicated unit that does this as well. Um, so that's the one, one aspect of, of the divisional work. The second is the, um, what we call export promotion and marketing. This is when now we take what we would call our export ready enterprises some of whom would have gone through our export development and support program and been certified there. Some of whom are already exporting, but they want to access new markets. We then have a dedicated export promotion and marketing program. 
um, whether it's to the continent, it's to Asia, Americas, Europe, you name it. Um, and, and, and the majority of it is really leveraging some of the free trade agreements or preferential trade agreements that we have with the rest of the world. In this space, we also manage an incentive called the Export Marketing and Investment Assistance Scheme, EMEA. Some of, some, some of the inter, uh, entrepreneurs may have heard of it. Um, so that with the EMEA scheme, we literally subsidize, if you will, our enterprises to, ex to access new markets. We would pay, for example, for a pavilion if, if there's a trade fair going on. Um, we would uh, take some of the entrepreneurs on outward missions to engage with key stakeholders in the markets that we want to um, access. We would assist, for example, with in-store promotions in the markets that we want to access. So there's quite a number, there's, there's a toolbox, uh, and there's quite a number of support measures that entrepreneurs can access through this export promotion and marketing assistance scheme that we, that we manage. There are qualifying criteria, of course, um, but generally, again, we would then fund, be it your travel, be it accommodation, be it um, the pavilions, freight forwarding of your material and the like. So that's the second aspect of what the division does. The third aspect is uh, Trade Invest Africa. Um, this unit is specifically dedicated to supporting our entrepreneurs to continue to access um, and to build partnerships with, with strategic markets and firms on the rest of the continent in support of the CFTA, of course. Um, so here we broker relationships around investments, not just about exporting to the continent here, because we're, we're quite mindful of the developmental mandate that we have. Um, so we're also facilitating partnerships around investments, uh, technical capacity building um, programs where we exchange, whether it be issues of standards, issues of competition and the like. So, so here, this unit is, is, is looking at the whole gamut of our relationship with the rest of the continent, at least on the economic side. Um, the fourth aspect of the work that the division does is to manage our economic offices abroad. Um, the department has um, a number of um, officials, economic officials that are stationed in a number of embassies throughout the world, precisely to also render support to our entrepreneurs as they access foreign markets. So we've got about, at this point, close to 50 offices throughout the world, um, all the different continents. Of course, it's, it's, it's nowhere near enough, but, but you know, these are dedicated economic um, officials that are meant to then help entrepreneurs to access uh, new markets, to maintain the markets that they have, um, and to broker government-to-government -government communication and relationships or government business relationships that are required. Now, of course, there's other supportive um, areas of the work, but, but I think at the core, these are the four. Um, the export development and support, export promotion and marketing, Trade Invest Africa, as well as the, um, the work that we do with the foreign economic, with the economic offices abroad. Now, by the time we shut down for the festive season in December, we had already finalized our work program for the current year, including the resource allocation from the National Treasury. So we are now having to have a conversation about how do we redirect the resources that we had committed? Uh, because there's no way that we'll continue to deliver on some of the deliverables we had set for ourselves um, pre-COVID-19 uh, mm -hmm. uh, world. So, so we are in a situation now where, for example, we can't undertake iceberg promotion activities like we would have wanted to. Um, even now, a number of the pavilions, a number of the trade fairs, a number of the commitments that we had um, have had to be postponed by the very governments um, and, and the organizers throughout the world, whether it's Europe, whether it's Americas, even the continent itself. So we are sitting in a situation where we are saying, how do we still continue to still promote South African goods and services without necessarily having to be in country? Or, 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 or to go to that market. So, so our traditional ways of export promotion have been um, put under a spotlight to say, are they actually effective? And how do we begin now to, to look at new ways of, of promotion? So part of the conversation today uh, for us and the benefit that we'd like to get from a government standpoint is how best then we can be supportive of entrepreneurs in a crisis world. Um, the resources have been allocated, they are ring fenced, we just need to redirect them now to say, okay, since we cannot do the traditional promotion or we cannot do the traditional development and support trading program, 
what then? How do we still make sure that we train and certify new entrants into this whole exporting space without necessarily having to drive to Mpumalanga to do that because physical distance is a thing. Um, it's an issue. So, so, so this is why this conversation for us was very exciting when the opportunity arose um, because we are grappling with different options um, and how we can offer new solutions to, to yourselves as entrepreneurs. Um, and and we'll be, we are keen to hear from you as well around what else we can do. Um, I must say that there have been some interesting conversations at continental level that we've been having. Um, we've just finalized what could potentially be guidelines um, at the SADC level around responding to the crisis and so far as maintaining the flow of goods and services in the region. Um, but that does not mean that now we finalized as at Friday, but there's still room again for input from yourselves if necessary. We'll find a way to get the input to, to SADC. So now we are talking about South Africa's own domestic response um, to this. So before I, I, I wrap up, I just wanted to also give you a sense of what we've been thinking about um, as the DTIC and as the economic cluster more broadly around maintaining the flow of goods and services, uh, particularly to the continent. Um, a number of economies on the continent are dependent on South African goods and services. So for us to begin to shut down uh, trade flows um, or, or flows of goods and to a degree services, it would be, it would be catastrophic, not just to our own economy, but to, to the continental economy. So we're quite mindful of that responsibility. Um, we're also mindful that this crisis comes when we're chairing the EU as South mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. So th that is quite a, a big challenge for us to then rise up and, 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 and support and work together with, with our neighbors um, in that regard. So what we have been thinking about, at least domestically, is that, um, we are looking at creating, the, the minister hinted, Minister Patel hinted at it about two weeks ago. Um, somewhat, we haven't quite finalized what the name would be, but, but we are calling it an export stabilization incentive scheme, where we would divert, you know, part of the export promotion um, finances to supporting entrepreneurs that are exporting and some of the disruptions that may occur. Um, for some, goods have been held at the border because of uncertainties, um, you know, whether in South Africa or, or externally. So, so there's, there, there have been issues that have been raised by entrepreneurs to say when that happens and our goods are seized and, and, and countries are grappling with border closures and there's confusion and there's all of that, who then bears the cost of, of our impounded goods? Um, who's going to pay for the storage, for example? Uh, how can government help in that, in that regard? Um, so we're looking at some of the response support um, mechanisms. Of course, they won't be permanent, but insofar as the, the crisis is still ongoing, we're looking at how then do we support all of you as entrepreneurs that are in the export space, um, should such disruptions co occur to your operations and value chains. So, so, so that's the one part. Um, we have also opened up a um, crisis monitoring line. Uh, we call it an export barrier. So there's an email to, to that. So we've, we've been getting quite a number of, of issues that we've resolved even to date, working together with SARS and the like. Um, it's called export barriers at the dti.gov.za. I'll make sure that I share this with Lebu and, 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 and Raima so that all of you can have this as well. So, so we've got that this crisis monitoring um, system that we've set up via email and we, we are monitoring it jointly with uh, our partners, SARS, Competition Commission, CBCIPC and the like. So, so that's the one as well, it's live already, that, that's the one area that we've looked at. Um, we are also looking at um, providing support for exporters, at least utilizing e-commerce platforms and, and, and e-platforms for marketing South African goods and services. This is something that we've been thinking about for a number of years, but finally this crisis has actually pushed us to get it to happen. Um, where we can have a platform showcasing South African goods somebody sitting in Germany could just click on a website and get to see South African goods and services and, and, and get a description and be able to see visually and we facilitate the connection um, between the importer and the exporter and the like. So we're looking at that. We're having a conversation with, with Proudly SA. We had already started a similar platform, but how do we then expand it in this current environment and make it a bit more effective and user-friendly? Um, 
for entrepreneurs. And we're also looking at how do we also showcase entrepreneurs in the different provinces as well on their platform. So part of the conversation with Gauteng and, and, and other provincial um, is for promotion agencies uh, and the like, is, is for us to have a holistic uh, platform so that you know you don't have Western Cape have a platform just for the entrepreneurs and the rest of the country doesn't have. So so we also be having those sort of conversations. So we keen to hear what kind of platform you would want to see as entrepreneurs as well. Um, and of course, a number or unfortunately a number of our foreign offices are on shutdown because a number of where most of our offices are there's been states of emergencies declared, um, particularly in Europe. The Americas is still touch and go, um, and, and of course on the continent. So it's also looking at how best we utilize the resource, the human resources that we have in situ in these countries, um, even now, irrespective of the emergency, to then still continue to support um, the agenda. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now, but just to give you a sense that we are thinking of how best to support the trade flows and the continuation of the trade flows, how best to maintain the competitiveness of our enterprises, because what we don't want is to have this crisis decimate the productive capacity that we have, um, as well as some of the, 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 the market access uh, opportunities that we've already um, secured. Uh, we want new ones as well. So we are here as government being mindful that we are the enabler for business and, and, and we really quite open to to views of how best to enable this to happen. How do you still maintain your competitiveness and, and, and um, your market opportunities? And how do we not waste this crisis? I think that's the issue. We don't want to waste the crisis. So we've got room to innovate um, and we want to work together and hear from, from entrepreneurs around what that would look like. And post corona, how do we find a different DTIC? How do we find different support mechanisms that are agile, responsive, um, up to date, because um, some of our tools, I must admit myself, are a bit archaic. Um, but here we are. So, so, so that's why for me it was important that when this opportunity came, um, you know, we were keen to take it up to also hear from yourselves as as business people um, how the South African government can support you. Thanks, Lib. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Alrado. I think for that, that overview um, in terms of taking everybody on the journey on what the areas are that um, um, this particular area of the DTI is involved in, in terms of supporting uh, business outside uh, South Africa and, and, and reciprocal business um, coming in. Um, and also just, I think what you've presented is a, is a wonderful opportunity for those that have participated in the call right now. Um, to be able to provide input before you're finalizing um, exactly what those interventions need to be to support entrepreneurs going forward. So I would encourage people that are on the call on the call now, um, either to type in your questions in the Q and A section of the chat, or if you want to, there's a there's a button to say raise your hand. If you want to raise your hand, and Rehema will unmute you and you can kind of engage and talk. Just to use this opportunity, even if it's not a suggestion, but to share a challenge or a frustration that might then um, provide input as, as, as finalization of the input, as, as finalization of the interventions is, is, is being done. It, it might provide some input. We have two questions um, that we have uh, posed. Um, two questions from Vuyisa. Good morning, Vuyisa. Morning, um, Liv. Good morning. And, uh, and there are two questions that he's posed. The first, uh, I suppose, is, 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 a, is a yes and no, but you can give some insight. So, so the president, as chair of the AU, was due to have the presidential summit um, um, in May, um, which he was put, supposed to be hosting, um, as, 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 as it is with, with all the chairs of the AU. And the question is whether that is still going ahead or is that being moved to another, another time in the year? And then the second question, also from Borisa, that he had is that uh, he says on a re recent trip to, to Kenya, um, there was a, a, at the end of February, just before lockdown, the Kenyan minister of ICT mentioned a pan-African digital trade portal uh, that was seemingly a joint initiative to support the AFCTA. Is, th is that something that you can comment on? Do you know about it? Is there any involvement uh, from, from South Africans on, on that? So maybe we'll take those two and then I, I invite everybody else just to, um, to kind of um, add, add any questions that they have. Cool. Mm. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa Buisa, for the questions. Um, with respect to the May summit, we don't have a pronouncement as yet from the presidency. Um, we have a steering committee that looks at all the different issues related to the AU. And our lockdown is meant to end on the 18th of April. So there was a deliberate um, decision not to make any pronouncements so that we can monitor um, the possibility and the feasibility of, of still hosting the Extraordinary Summit. Um, it may be postponed, of course, because as you see, um, a lot of a lot of countries have only now started their own lockdown processes. Um, so, so, but we don't have an official pronouncement as yet um, as to as to the date. And the president may even, um, with the other heads of state, agree on on having some sort of a digital uh, conversation and a digital uh, summit. So, so, so I don't want to be prescriptive. Um, I'll allow this the steering committee to come up with with, with recommendations. But I do know that we are all meeting to discuss the options um, around around the summit um, in May. Whether or not we'll be able to meet physically, that's still the question to be decided upon. Mm. Now, the, the Pan-African Digital Trade uh, Portal, we have been made aware of it. It's something that came up, um, I think it was a, an initiative from Rwanda. So we're quite keen at at um, being a participant there too. So there had been some issues around how do we, because every country, for some strange reason on the continent, is one of the challenges that we need to address. Um, every different countries have different, um, for example, definitions of what the what what their businesses would be like. Our definition of SMME is kind of different to what um, other countries' definition of SME is. Um, so I remember that the last few months, part of the conversation was that to say the portal, how do we then begin to delineate? Um, because there was an issue around big businesses swallowing up small businesses. How do we define a small business? What's micro? What's small? We're still caught up in those conversations, unfortunately. We, so as entrepreneurs, help us. Uh, to get out of that rut. Um, so, so it is an idea that we are quite behind the South Africa, um, provided we get rid of some of these um, teething, potential teething matters that may waste um, our time. But what we would want to do also is to have domestic platforms. So we are still going ahead and establishing, looking at establishing a South African domestic platform that we can then plug into the, the, the Pan-African platform at the point that we get our house in order as a continent there. Okay, cool. I'm keen to get other voices into the into the room per se in inverted commas. So there are some questions that have been posed, but I'm going to ask the individuals to pose them themselves. So I'm going to do Rehema, uh, uh, if we can do this in order of the people that have brought through their questions, and then they can ask their questions. So the first person is Homutsa Sikute. Um, if you can unmute her, and she'll she'll ask the question. The next person was uh, Queen. Our Queen has got a question. I see Sophie put up her hand as well. So perhaps we can have some question from her. And then I also see Zamo has also got a, a, a comment or a question that she'd like to put through. So perhaps if we can have it in that order, Fomoso, Queen, Sophie, Zamo. And let's get other people's voices into the, into the conversation. Thank you. Good morning. Morning, everyone. Hi, Fomoso. I don't have the best stable if I can say you provide marketing promotion support for entities that are ready to trade across the world. Uh, my question is uh, I believe now as we re establish our businesses, those that are in services it would be an ideal time to tap into that. So if you could say more, a little bit more about it, please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Can we get the next one or Lebo? No, let's get the next one. Uh, I'll screen. I'm going to take all four and then I'll, I'll come yeah. back. No? I think that okay. makes sense. Uh -huh. Queen? Queen. You on? Okay. Oh, I've done. Let's move to the next 
So morning, see? morning. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, my question is aligned to Komoto's question. We are in the same space. We are colleagues. We are in the speaking and coaching space. And I, I, I'm not sure whether there's any specific support for people in the services um, space or whether the focus is on people who have commodities who need to be to be exported physically and transported. And, and I'm just, as you were speaking about, Lerato, about your, your offices outside the country, my other question, the question that came up for me is, who do you use when you have functions? Would that not be an opportunity to showcase some of us in, in functions that, that South Africa hosts? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Morning, okay. Renata, how are you? Good morning, hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sophie. How are you all? Mm -hmm. I'm wonderful, how are you doing? Not too bad, thanks. Not too Good. bad. Okay, um, my question, I think you semi-answered it when you, uh, I have kind of a two-part question. Uh, I think you answered it in versus question. It was, it's really more to do around the AFCTA and yeah. the dissemination of information for businesses around that and kind of the plans, even in, you know, with COVID now, what's the mm. department planning around that? Mm. Um, and then obviously because we all, I speak on behalf of Borsa, one of the key challenges that businesses have is how do they get on your database? Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people see the trade, you know, like they'll see a state visit mm -hmm. happening and then they, they know there's a business forum, mm -hmm. but no one knows when it happened, how it happened, sure. how to apply for it. It's not that easy to navigate. Um, the website is also what we hear. Okay. Sure. Thank you. That's fine. Zamo? Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much, um, uh, guys. Mine is, um, is around the Export Development Support Program. We had um, quite a good response from your department um, around the timelines for the scheduled uh, support program for the year. Now, uh, in light of what we are experiencing, um, what are the thoughts around um, uh, conducting this support program? Have you guys had any thoughts or, or, or different strategy of how the program or the support program is going to be undertaken in different mm. provinces? Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. I think those are the four. Um, if you don't mind, um, Komoto and Queen, I'll start, Windsor Fire Services, I'll, I'll kind of combine um, the response there. Um, Queen, I think you touched on, on, on the situation and the problem at the same time. Uh, because right now, the way our MA has been structured is that it supports um, those entrepreneurs that are producing goods, a, ten, a tangible. Um, and I think for the longest time, traditionally, that has been how we've been defining what our raise and data is as, as the DTI, right? To say, we're in the space of industrialization, manufactured goods, but the world and South African economy itself has actually moved far beyond just manufactured goods. Um, we've seen that services are fast and growing. Um, and, and, and we, I think we're similar to a number of economies as well, even on the continent. A number of us are struggling with defining a clear services strategy and a services support mechanism. Where we've gotten it right is those services that are actually input into the manufacturing of a particular good, right? Um, so, so uh, or, or those services that are that are contributing to, say, an investment project, say, your architectural services, engineering, and the like. Um, services such as yours, such as coaching and mentoring and the like, to be honest, we don't necessarily would have a support mechanism for that. Um, it doesn't mean there's no room for that. It just says it's not it's not a space that we've looked at because traditionally we've been very focused on 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 supporting manufactured um manufactured goods and then the ancillary services that are related to that um however i know that our other departments uh although it's not a it's not 
sort of a systematic strategy on their part. A number of our missions and embassies utilize um, quite a number of South African services across the board, whether they're arts and culture ones or, or it's about it's, it's what you're doing, speaking and coaching and support and the like. We ourselves as well, for the support of our foreign officers abroad, for the support of our teams, we do engage some of some such services, but there's no necessarily concerted or dedicated ring-fenced incentive support mechanism around this. Um, it's something that, as I said earlier, let's not waste the crisis. So if there's a critical area across the board uh, in the economy that we need to look at, um, it's something that we would need, and through such engagements, I would also need to take it up the flagpole and raise it um, to say there's an aspect of the economy that we're not necessarily taking care of. Uh, so, so I'd be quite keen to 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 get more um, from yourselves, um, you know, outside of this conversation as well, around how we can then support some of these other services that we have not thought about. Um, and I think part of it is why we're even struggling at continental level and globally to agree on on, on services negotiations. Uh, you know, that, that's a big struggle because it's a bit of a, everybody, all economies are struggling, including trade negotiators are struggling with, with what that actually means and how, how best we can support um, our domestic industries as well as global services flows. So, so it's quite an important conversation, this one, uh, and I don't want to treat it glibly, so we need to drill deeper into this um, and, and, and to take it back to the DTI and the economic cluster on how we can best support uh, yourselves in this regard. Um, but what I do know also is happening is that our embassies, um, their co-ambassadors, um, they, they actually are utilizing, uh, you know, South African services more than most. Um, so, so it's also important that we bring in Derko into this, into this conversation uh, when we continue with it. Um, Sophie, important one. Businesses, database, how do we get businesses to participate? Historically, what we have done, um, and, and it's something that we are, we are reviewing, and, and, and the new minister that we have, Minister Patel, is also expecting a review of, of the methodology. Traditionally, I think for over 15 years, what we have done when the president, for example, has to undertake a particular mission, um, is that we would, um, then engage the business associations or the business formations, your BUSA, your BBC, uh, your, your BLSA. Um, so generally would get the schedule and say, okay, the president's undertaking a mission to Ghana. Um, so what we would do as the DTI would then engage the business formations and say, engage your membership um, and make recommendations for businesses that, that can support the president. Um, there are shortcomings, of course, to that, to that approach because not every uh, entrepreneur is a member of the, of the formations and associations. But there was a period in which that made sense, right? There was a period in which we could be able to, uh, it was seen as you're able to then hold um, the organizations accountable if, if there are any recommendations that are not necessarily in line uh, with what, what, what um, the president is aiming to achieve and the like. So, so there is there is merit in that approach, but the, the the current question is now how do we address and make sure that we we also um, consider those particular entrepreneurs that are not necessarily members of these associations and organisations. Um, so we're working on 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 particular criteria that the minister has proposed. Um, we we got short circuited by this crisis, I must say. But it's something that will be transparent about. It's something that we'll have to even put on our website once once we are done to say this is how, um, particularly heads of state-led missions. Um, those are the ones that we've had the, the most criticisms because a lot of people feel that we we don't necessarily also take um, new entrants that are strategic projects uh, with other markets. So we we're mindful of that. Then there's a second layer now of those companies that we take on on missions either led by a senior official or led by, by, by you know, a minister or deputy minister. Those ones we always put on our website in advance and say, we're going to undertake a mission to Mozambique. These are the sectors we're going to be focusing on and companies that are interested in participating, particularly those that want to be funded by us through EMEA, um, would then get on 
and apply and, and, and go on that. So, so that one is pretty much transparent. The ones where, where the head of state is leading becomes a bit more delicate because there are security issues and a number of other variables. Uh, but that does not negate the fact that uh, perhaps just relying on the business of associations and formations as we've done in the past could have been a bit uh, more exclusionary, I guess, to a degree, which is some part of the criticism we've gotten. So, so those are the two aspects. Um, even now, by, no, by December, we had already posted um, where we are going to take, to have all our trade fairs and pavilions for the year. Uh, what we retracted was all the outward missions that we were going to undertake um, to the rest of the world you know, that we always also put up in advance. By January, it's up in this, on the website. So people would know between now and the end of the financial year, uh, where are we gonna undertake missions? And then businesses engage us if they want, they're interested in their particular sector. So now what we're going to do is to then relook. Uh, of course, we, we can't physically be undertaking those missions. So we'll be then communicating differently and then and, and finding new ways of, of supporting businesses. So, so um, in this long-winded answer to you, uh, Sophie, the, the, you are quite abs you are quite right in, in, in what you've raised. Uh, we are mindful of it. We are looking at a solution. Minister Patel expects a solution to say what will be a new criteria for business delegation supporting the president, and we'll make sure as soon as those are ready that we we, we share those um, and we find a better way um, to to support. South African entrepreneurs more broadly, uh, both small, big, um, and, and, and medium, of course. Now, uh, Zano, as for development and support, you've raised, um, sorry, I'm, I'm being distracted by, by, by the typed in questions. You raised the issue of the export development and support. Um, yes, we have to course correct now that there's a crisis. We cannot anymore have people gathering in a, in a conference room to be trained and to be offered this uh, physically. So we've been talking to a number of the provinces to say, how can we work together around providing um, e-learning, um, e-learning mechanisms? We as DTI now are busy engaging our service providers because the, the, the training and the Global Export and Passport Program and, and the input, we engage service providers that deliver the content for us. So. And, and everybody got used to the fact that you fly to Mpumalanga and there's a cohort of people that you have to train over a number of days and then you come back. So we are looking at re-looking uh, re at our, our agreement so that we can offer um, electronic training for a number of the participants throughout the, the provinces. Some provinces are more ready than others to take this up. Gauteng, of course, Western Cape, you know, the, the usual, the large ones. So we've been in conversation with them to say, how do we still continue? And how are they going to manage then to get us the cohort that we require online and make sure that the right support is provided, um, whether it's internet connectivity and the like. So those conversations are, are ongoing. Part of, um, and, and I'm glad that there'll be a different session with Gauteng. Um, with, with DGDA because those are, uh, it's, it's one of the key stakeholders we've been talking to around, not just export development and support, but also the export promotion and the, and the platform that we want to have for Gauteng based entrepreneurs as well um, to be supported. So are we thinking about it for sure? We have to think about it because we do have the budget allocated to it and we have to spend that budget irrespective. So Treasury won't be happy that we are sitting with the money and we blame Corona. So we have to, uh, make sure that we come up with a plan B and a C and a D uh, for enterprises um, while meeting the target of, of, of export um, development and support. Oh. Wow. <laughs> it's wonderful to hear of all the things that you're considering um, and all the things that you're thinking about. And I think this is a wonderful opportune um, a session that we've got where people can actually engage uh, with, with what you're saying. We've got, I see three more people wanting to ask questions. So we'll take those three. Um, and then we'll see a bit more of that. Marlo, you had a question um, um, that you've asked, and I think it's probably um, the, the comment that uh, Ratu just made now around using digital e-learning. Uh, so I'm happy for you to raise that question. Matsepo, you had a question, so we'll go straight after that. And then I see Jackie, you talked up, so we will take you straight after Matsepo. Marlo, do you want to put forward uh, your thoughts and your question? Hello, Marlo. Wow. 
Rehema, has he been unmuted? Yes. Okay. Can I'll you hear me you. now? Ah, there we yes, go. Hi. Wonderful. Hi, yes, hi. Yeah. Hi, Lira. So thanks so Hello. much. I think you've answered um, some of the questions. I was just thinking, you know, it's, 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 it's a downtime for a lot of entrepreneurs now, and some of us mm. are not exporting, and it's an ideal time to start thinking about the things we should be thinking and factoring into our businesses to get it export ready. So yes. it's, 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 it's good to hear, you know, of your online programs and things that you're thinking um, of, of putting into place. Um, I'm not sure if you'd be able to share from a timeline perspective when you'd be expecting to get um, these things mm -hmm. running or where we could access such information in the interim so that we just start planting the seeds in our, in our businesses as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Matebo. Now, um, hi, ladies. Thank you, Levo. Thank you, Rehema. Thank you, Larato. Um, so I had one question, and then I, uh, you know, another question just crept up on me. Um, I don't remember who was talking about the EFCFT, and I was thinking, you know, when you attend most of these, um dialogues or, 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 or seminars or whatever, where they're speaking about women and trade and AFCFTA, they always say, know who your trade negotiator is, your country trade negotiator, so that you're able to then approach them and, and have a conversation or, you know, with them around representation and how women can actually mm. take their, their stuff forward um, with the trade negotiator. And I realized that nobody actually comes out and tells us who our trade negotiator is. So, so that's my first question in South Africa, for who is that and, and how do we mm. have that conversation corporate, corporately, especially maybe from a womanomics perspective, maybe they can take up that conversation forward. Mm -hmm. um, but my second question, which is my real question, um, I had already typed it in um, to then say, so I'm involved with, the, with she trades in the country. And I know that it is being driven by small business development and the department of women and the presidency now recently mm. but because it is actually it actually falls under um export trade development support marketing and 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 your department or rather your your unit has been engaged mm. my question is what is your plan around it if there is a plan has money been set aside to actually push it forward or, or you know um because it's not driven by you you're not the lead department is it is it mm. late thank you okay great thanks Marcella. we had jackie jackie you had a question yeah. jackie hi jackie hi sorry i i just realized that uh, i'm the only coroner on the platform. Um, I'm from Uganda. Yeah. And um, I, uh, my question really is um, about um, the vulnerable people. Um, thank you, Level, for, for your presentation. Um, my experience, I've worked in the East African region a lot more than in South Africa. Um, and in my work, even in South Africa, I worked in, in Southern Africa, I worked in Lesotho. Uh, in my work, I realized that a lot of the valuable people, uh, especially in the agricultural trade, are also the ones who do not have access to the internet and all the things that will come with e-learning. Um, and with your trade development agenda, I, I wonder if that's something that you have um, put in mind, um, considered how you're going to e-learning to people who do not even have the um, capability of, say, of uh, accessing the internet like we are doing now. Um, and then the other issue is really on standards, which is affecting us, especially for agricultural traders, um, with, development, with uh, supporting uh, trade development. Most of our, our barriers relate to um, not being able to meet the international standards. Um, um, how how is uh, the South African government actually helping support or develop or educate um, people on um, on such things and how to meet the standards? Um, I I think it's less it's for manufacturing. It's it's a 
a little bit more um, nice about cultural products, foodstuffs, animals, and plants. It's a little bit more complex and also not very well um, controlled at the, at the WTO level because of the private comments that are set by big organizations that are actually stopping our trade. Um, I hope I, I hope you can hear me. I <laughs> those are my questions. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. I, I hope I caught all of them because Jackie's line was a bit unclear. So you'll help me, Lebone, if I missed any okay. aspect sure. of, of, of um, the question. Um, Marlo, thank you so much. Timelines um, for the digital platforms. We've given ourselves until, at least now, this is our own internal deadline. Hallelujah! Until... Hallelujah! Sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah, indeed. Hallelujah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Mala, we've given ourselves um, until so May, sorry. right? <laughs> no, not a problem. That, that that was necessary. It's good for the soul. Um, <laughs> we've given ourselves until May, and 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 giving ourselves until May does not mean that there's inertia between now and then. Um, we are busy piloting what this would look like because there are a number of digital training mechanisms and platforms. And I think, Matempo, you touched on she trades becomes one of them. Um, so it's also about how do we leverage what we already have? I mentioned that we're already talking to Proudly SA who have a similar platform to she trades, but very specific to South African made goods um, and the like. So, so we're looking at that as well as how do we utilize um, and leverage the resources that are given to provinces as well. So we are having those conversations. So between now and May, by May, we want to have, make, give you announcements that make sense. Uh, we are mindful that it may, it, in, in, in the entrepreneur cycle, May may, may seem like it's a very long time away. Um, but at the end of the day, we also don't want to give you solutions that are gonna waste time that have not been thought through, that have not been piloted. Um, so we are busy now piloting a few options, particularly around the promotion aspect. Um, this, is, this is when our proudly SAG trades becomes important. Um, then on the export development and support part, uh, which could happen earlier, this is a, a function of redirecting and changing our terms uh, and conditions that we've entered into with our trainers and also making sure that our provinces have the readiness to, to facilitate e-learning e for, for their entrepreneurs. Um, because generally we would be the ones flying to the provinces, uh, we, we would book a conference venue or whatnot, and then we train people that way. Um, it, it, it's quite easy. So, so now that, that eliminates the challenge of people that don't have internet connectivity. But now that we are in this space, physical distancing is an issue. I can guarantee you that uh, Mpumalanga has the same level of support as, as Gauteng. So these are the conversations we're having to say, how are we still going to deliver on this and make sure that the provinces are standing, are, are sort of rising up and assisting. Um, mm -hmm. So I give you May precisely because I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of all these conversations that have to happen in between um, and all the compliance issues that we have to deal with because I'm in a bureaucracy we have to account for the time and, and the money and the tax money that we'll be spending. So, so there's a lot of thoroughness that has to, that has to be um, ensured in the process. So I would then say to you, May, and we'll make sure that it's public. It'll have to be on the website. And I'm happy to come back to Womenomics because I was saying to Lebo and Rahima earlier to say, some of these issues that you're raising, it will be good that in a few months, uh, even then by May, June, mm. we reconnect so that you can get the feedback of where we are and what we're doing. Um, because ideally for us, this should not be a talk shop. This is a very important conversation um, as well for government that I'm gonna take back to the cluster and then you have to come up with strategic solutions for yourselves. Um, Mazabo, CFTA, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, we always need to have the voice of business, uh, particularly the voice of, of, of women-owned businesses. Um, I'll share with you, our chief trade negotiator is Xavier Karin, there's a whole team of negotiators, but the issue necess is not necessarily the individual. I think the issue is op opening up space for your input when commitments are made. Um, and, 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 you know, whether, whether it's a negotiation of a tariff and, and setting a tariff level or it's a negotiation that, that, you know, that speaks to a particular regulatory matter and changing the regulatory environment. So, so it's around how, how does your voice 
um, get incorporated, if you will, in, in the trade negotiations agenda. Traditionally, what we've done is that when we set the agenda, we then engage through NEDLAC. Right, we would take all the, the, the views that labor and, and, and business would, would input through NETLAC. But again, going back to what Sophie had raised earlier and part of the response, there, there's an over reliance, right? On and this is not a criticism on the formations at all, so I don't want to be misinterpreted here. But but then there's an over reliance on the business associations and formations as representatives of the collective voice. Um, Whereas there has to be somehow, we must find ways to open up room for individual um, company voices in the processes. So, so, so it's, it's quite a valid point. Um, and the one thing that gives me, um, that encourages me, I guess, uh, in, in this space is that it's also a presidential priority. The president wants to see economic development by women as one of the deliverables of his chairing of the EU to say what systems have we put in place to make sure that female entrepreneurs are given the voice, they're visible, they're supported, not just in South Africa, but on the continent. So this also opens up space for us to be in those conversations now and say, as female entrepreneurs, what do we want to see on our continent? Um, because this is what, on literally on a bi-weekly basis, the president gets a report of what are we doing so far as the CFG and implementation. So that's a very important platform. And, and we are here as officials to be taking all these issues up um, for, for, for yourselves as business. So I'd, I'd be quite keen to hear, uh, and I'm happy to, and I hope Lebo will share, please share my email addresses and details as well with the, yeah. the, the, the people that have joined us today. Because I want to directly hear as well what, um, or even your successes are, so we can showcase those um, as well. And then I can also take them to our colleagues, whether it's the trade negotiations, it's the incentive people, it's the industrialization people. Um, and, and we begin, begin to come up with homegrown African, South African solutions um, to some of these, these things. Um, she trades, what is the DTIC plan? She, she trades is fully um, in line with what we want to do. Um, as, as, as DTI and how we want to support DTI. So we are now talking to um, small business. They are part of our cluster now as a response uh, to COVID process. Um, so we are now looking at how do we also redirect some of our resources to support in such a platform. Um, we've got a strategic relationship with the ITC who started this platform. So it's about um, also bringing our, our own weight to bear. Mm -hmm. on the on the platform we also mindful as well to say that with the creation of of, of small business department um, we had to also delineate what our our mandate is as dti right so 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 we don't necessarily overstep and go and deal with smes anymore um we now sorry i've got my five-year-old who wants something <laughs> i know go go and give it to auntie there. Okay. Say hello, Ritu. I know the feeling. <laughs> She's asking you that I love her in their, on. You I'm are in their homes. You <laughs> are in their homes. You bring your offices to their homes, so we must allow them. <laughs> Thank you so much. She, she is not relenting. Um, okay, the, okay, I'm going to sort out the Wi-Fi. Let me... <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Lebu, you can relate, ne? I did a serious <laughs> negotiation. <laughs> yes, anyway, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so where was I? Yes, the, the she trades platform. So so we we now have a distinction to say DTI will support um, relatively larger companies, right? Um, and and some what we would call our export champions, and then DBSD will then look at the SME space. So we are mindful that we also don't overreach, but there has to be a way that we collaborate. So now that we, we have to find ways of redirecting our export marketing and promotion resources, this is one of the areas that we can look at strategically um, around that. But again, it's, it's, it's still something that we're talking about. Jake, ooh, you raised a lot of very important yet difficult issues. Né? Um, how do we how best do we take care of the vulnerable um, in society and make sure that they're connected? Did they, they will correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, parts, parts of what Jackie was saying I had missed, 
as well. Um, I think JT emphasized the importance of agricultural traders and yes. how we support those. Yep. Uh, and something around funding, that's why I'll need you to clarify for me what, what JT was, was asking there. Um, JT, this is a difficult one for, for me to answer because there's, there are multiplicity of actors in this space. Um, when we're talking about connectivity and the like, now we are talking about the, 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 the Department of uh, Communications who've got that mandate to deal with those sorts of issues. Uh, I know that our agricultural department actually also has been very relatively well resourced around supporting um, small businesses in the agriculture space and, and the agro-business, the entire value chain um, space as well. So we are mindful as ETI as well to say, some of some of the areas we don't go deeply into um other than looking at the agro processing part of things and the infrastructure around that um allowing agric agriculture department maybe that's also a, a weakness when it comes to bureaucracies because we tend to stick to our mandates ne? Mm -hmm. so um in certain areas we, we we become very mindful not to overstep because there are departments that are resourced that are mandated that are legislatively empowered to do certain things so in as much as we would want to do them we are hamstrung because um there's not necessarily the space that we operate in um but you know we should continue such conversations and see yeah. how we, we we leverage and we work together um not just domestically in south africa but also on the continent uh but i must say these are very important areas and they're difficult ones i don't have an answer for usdti Mm. insofar as making sure that the most vulnerable are provided with the most basic of the tools um, that we need, be it internet connectivity and the like. Uh, because there are departments that whose bread and butter daily is to make sure that that happens. Uh, mine is to take your product once you are um, making a particular product. Mine is to make sure that I help you to prepare for the export market if there are aspects of training that you require. And mine is to make sure that I take you to market so that you can promote and showcase your product and service, depending on that service. Um, so so it's, it's as myopic uh, as that, uh, what, what we do. And that's what we want to continue to support, uh, but then become more innovative around that, of how, how do we still do that, but in a more innovative way. Um, mm -hmm. and, and to make sure that we don't leave the women behind. Uh, one of my biggest bugbears as well is that most of our delegations, 70, 60, 70 percent would be male. So we need to talk about that and say, where are the ladies? What do we need to do to make sure that we, we bring our women up uh, with us uh, in the economic chain um, so that this economy can, can, can grow bringing our women along? So, so, so that, that for us is a priority. And our president is relentless on this. Um, as well. So he's, he's actually literally holding everybody to account around this to say, where are the women? Um, I see my email address is there. Thank you so much for sharing it. So colleagues, please, um, colleagues, sorry. On the chat. I zoom with my colleagues <laughs> almost every day. <laughs> so yes, everyone, um, I'll be happy to hear from you. Please also give my cell number if you can, because I, I prefer WhatsApp as well. If you yeah. can, please don't call because calls, it becomes difficult to to answer the calls because most of the time we've been in a session or what not. Um, but but WhatsApps, I'm, I'm very responsive on. Okay. I'm Hello, just mind you. I'm mindful of, of time. We've, we've gone over. So I think perhaps if we can go maybe for another five minutes or so, so that we can close off just to, to, to respect people's time. And then we're quite happy to facilitate uh, whatever questions need to be asked. And if we have to have another session, we can particularly facilitate that, which we can do. Um, so yeah. uh, I think uh, Jackie's second question was related to standards, was related to um, standards as, as one of mm. the barriers of, oh, of, yeah. of, 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 of the exports. So I think the question was, how do we facilitate the meeting of the standards as one of mm. the barriers of access, mm. access to export opportunities? So that's, that's the question that she had asked. And then with everybody's yes. permission, if we can go on for another five minutes, I know we're over, but I think the conversation is quite... Uh, interesting that way. So I think people are quite keen. And as I said, we're quite happy to facilitate a follow-up session uh, if that's what mm. we need to do. So Jackie's question was around standards, if we can. Yes. Yes, that. yes, 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 Jackie. This is, this is quite a big, 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 big non-tariff barrier um, on the continent. And, and unfortunately, it's also historical, right? Um, because 
again, colonial ties, colonial links. So your Lusophone countries, Francophone countries, Anglophone countries will recognize different standards and most of those standards would be set um, from where their former colonies would, would have been. So, so, so that's one of the issues that we are grappling with, not just, even in SADC. So not just broadly CFTA, even in SADC, we're still grappling with the fact that we don't necessarily have um, mutual recognition of each other's standards. Um, the SABS standards at least has a wider footprint, but it's still not enough. Um, so that's a huge, 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 huge barrier, uh, but it requires political will. So we're busy making sure that even within the continental conversation, uh, we can set the parameters and the regulatory framework around how we're going to deal with standards on the continent because the CFTA can rise and fall on those. Um, particularly, well, SPS standards, uh, so agricultural standards are different, but standards for, for, for manufactured goods and the like, that's where our biggest bugbear is. Um, so part of the conversations now and part of what the new CFTA secretariat would have to look at um, and I see now they're busy recruiting for experts around different areas, and this is one of them as well. Is that how are we going to, if we have to establish a homegrown African standard, let it be. Otherwise, we have to look at harmonization. We have to look at at least mutual recognition of each other's standards, even if they're different. We are far from that. Um, there's still a bit of a, of a struggle around that. But I think the infrastructure that has been set up around the CFTA, including establishing these institutional mechanisms, at least open up room for not just yourselves as entrepreneurs to input on such issues, but even us as, as governments now, we've got a space to go to and say, specifically related to matters of trade, not just the politics of trade, but the technicalities of trade. How do we deal with all these different issues? And this is one of them. Um, so I'm optimistic that we'll get there, but we're not there yet, Jake. Um, you've diagnosed the correct problem but we need joint solutions business driven and government driven solutions around these thank you so much uh wow uh, i think we could have gone on for a lot longer <laughs> on this and some of the issues that we have so i think for us it gives us a big sense that uh this is definitely a conversation that we need to continue with um we love it because it's in line with the work that we are we, we are focusing on which is really around how do we how do we build the opportunities for reciprocal business uh, for women across the continent? So I think we can have definitely unpack uh, this a lot more in terms of saying what are the practical ways that women need to engage and, and what are some of the tools and support mechanisms that are available for them to be able to do this. So thank you so much, Lerato, for that. I think mm -hmm. probably if we, if we allow this to go through, there can be very many more questions. And we're quite happy, as I said, to facilitate um, uh, uh, many more of these sessions, uh, particularly as we navigate to this new environment. I think for many of us, when we come out of this, it's going to, mm. we're going to be slightly different than what we looked like uh, before the lockdown nine, 10 days ago. Um, and so this is an opportunity, I think, to work with the yeah. DTI to, to begin to shape what that looks like. We will certainly be working yes, with yourselves yes. and your team to say, how do we make sure that the content for these sessions um, uh, makes uh, makes sense and how do we br bring it to the fore as we've done in the past in some of our in some of our workshops and in, in the conferences that we've had and we work with Rato and the team to try and make mm -hmm. sure that happens so thank you very much everybody uh, thank you for your time Rato. thank you for your insights thank you also for the generosity of making yourselves mm -hmm. available and sharing your email and sharing your contact details because I think for, for many people that that really shows you the spirit of, of your team and the work that you're doing uh, to make sure that you're accessible and, and, and providing support. Um, I also like to acknowledge on the call, I see Precious has joined us. Precious is from Solidaridad and Solidaridad uh, have been a partner with us on these sessions. So they've, they've sponsored these sessions and have made them possible for us. So thank you so much, Precious. Good morning, welcome <laughs> uh, uh, to the session. And she was at the last session and, and I'm sure we will, we will be continuing uh, with her. Um, we will be making this recording uh, available um, as soon as we've kind of done what the top and tail of it uh, um, um, in terms of the editing and we'll make it available to everybody that I think signed up for the session but also that was actually on the call we, we find that people sign up not necessarily to be part of the session but to actually access the content and so mm -hmm. you can be able to engage with it if there are things that you haven't heard but also it also allows you perhaps to then ask any other questions that you want to ask going forward 
uh, we will share our next topic, uh, which is on Friday with you, uh, probably during the course of today and hope that you can join. But also, if there are any other topics that you have in mind that you think are, are close to you, that you would like for us to, touch, to, to engage on and make sure that we touch base on over the next couple of weeks, please feel free to share those with us. As you said, this platform is about making sure that we create a space for entrepreneurs to get information, insights, to engage, to collaborate, and also just to make it through this, this tough period. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Thank you so much, Lerato. It's been, it's been wonderful. Thank you to my partner in crime on the other side, Rehema. She's decided she's the DJ who was playing the music <laughs> earlier on um, and, uh, and keeping things happening in the background. Um, so, and, uh, oh, there she is. <laughs> Um, and and we'll, as I said, we'll be sharing this information. If you've shared your email with us, you'll get this information with us. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for making the time. And we look forward to engaging with you on the next session. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Please, please stay in touch. Please stay in touch. I'd like to hear from you, your ideas, your complaints, your compliments, uh, whatever you want DTIC to know. I promise. <laughs> we'll thank, do. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Rehema. Thanks, Lebu. Thanks, Rehema. Thanks, Bye. Lebu. Bye. 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 Bye.